Welcome to the KubeCon EU 2020 Intro to Helm. I'm Bridget Kremhout. I live in Minneapolis, podcast with the rest of DevOps, lead the DevOps Days conferences, and I'm a PM for open source Kubernetes ecosystem uh, software at Microsoft. And I'm Marc Kuzam. I'm a core maintainer for the Helm project. I work for the IT department at the city of Montreal, Canada, where we've been using Helm in production for three years now. I'm particularly happy to be part of KubeCon EU because as a Montreal native, I speak French. So uh, si quelqu'un veut poser des questions en français, il va me faire plaisir de vous répondre. Mais je ne parle pas le français. <laughs> Juste moi. <laughs> All right, so, so here's what we're gonna talk about today. First, we're gonna go through some Helm fundamentals, like easily installing software into Kubernetes. Then we'll show you how to get started with charts, which are the packages used by Helm. We'll also look at the migration from Helm version two to Helm version three. And that's, that's very important for anyone already using Helm v2. And then we'll wrap up with a look at the Helm community. And don't worry, We'll also have concrete demos throughout the presentation. All right. So if you're tuning in because you're hoping to find out what even is Helm and why do people use it, uh, Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes, like Homebrew, Apt, Yum. It's the de facto standard for packaging and deploying Kubernetes applications. And Helm's superhero origin story is it started as a hackathon project at a small startup called Deus in October 2015, shortly after the Kubernetes project itself launched. Uh, then Google joined the Helm project, Microsoft acquired Deus, and Helm became very important to many, many people. Many people like, for example, the city of Montreal. As I mentioned, we've been using Helm since May 2017. And so we offer online services to our citizens, and many of those services are deployed in production using Helm. And now, since April 2020, Helm is a fully graduated CNCF project. It has tens of thousands of GitHub stars, over 2 million downloads of Helm CLI every month. And did you know that Helm is relied on by over 70% of Kubernetes users? That's a lot of users. Probably more by now. I think that was a number from a CNCF survey maybe a year ago. So it's probably even more now. Let's talk about what Helm does for all these users. Starting by managing complexity. Helm makes it easier to define your applications as YAML charts. So you can abstract away business logic and you know, make your apps easier to install. It also lets you update your applications in a consistent, repeatable way so that you can mirror behavior across all your environments. Uh, you can share public or private charts in a decentralized way. And then there's rollbacks, which are technically roll forwards to a past state. I, I cannot stress this enough. Um, Helm does not provide time travel. So th this is important to understand. Uh, with a rollback, any data that's been changed in your database or in your file system, it won't be changed back. It's not like restoring a backup or anything. What a rollback really does is it makes it very easy to redeploy an old version. Maybe because, I don't know, the latest version you deployed had a big bug in it and you wanna go back to a version that worked before. That's what the rollback does. Okay, but enough talk. Let's get our hands dirty now. Let's look at how to get started with Helm. For the demos, we're gonna assume that you already have Helm installed but if you don't, you can look at the Helm documentation for the particular installation details that are right for you. All right, so for our first demo, we're gonna show you how incredibly easy it is to install software into Kubernetes when using Helm. We're gonna install a web server, so an Nginx web server into our brand new namespace today. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I have Helm properly installed. So as you can see, version 3.2.4, which is the latest as of today. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I can speak to my Kubernetes cluster, or Helm can communicate to my Kubernetes cluster. And it does that using the variable kubeconfig and a kubeconfig file, just like kubectl does. In this case, I'm gonna use a kind cluster. 
which is Kubernetes in Docker, which is a test cluster just for today's demo. The first thing I'm going to do is create a namespace for our demo. Since we're installing Nginx, let me call it Nginx namespace. And then I'm going to show you that nothing's in it. So Nginx get, let's say, service. As you can see, there's nothing. Get pod, there's nothing. And get config map, there's clearly nothing. I just created the namespace. Now we're going to use Helm to install Nginx. So the command is very simple. It's Helm install. I'm going to tell it which namespace to use. So Nginx namespace. I'm going to give my release a name. So let's call it Nginx demo. This is what I'm going to name what I'm, the, the software I'm going to run. And the recipe for it, the chart in Helm terminology, which we'll talk about in the second demo, is Bitnami Nginx. So I'm gonna, this is the recipe I want to deploy. And I can just send that command. Helm then creates all the YAML necessary, ships it off to Kubernetes, and cre Kubernetes then creates all the proper entities. So if I go back and I check for a service in my namespace, you can now see that, oh, I have a new service for Nginx demo. For pods, I have a running pod for my Nginx. And if I look for a config map, I have a config map for my Nginx demo. So I'm all set up with my Nginx all ready to go. I can also use Helm to get information about what's running in my cluster uh, that's been deployed with Helm. So if I ask for um, Helm list into that namespace, it shows me that I have one thing deployed. I can also ask for the status also in the namespace of my Nginx demo. And then it prints me again some information. The name, the last time it was deployed, the namespace in which it is, uh, current status, revision, etc., etc., And some information provided by the software itself. Beyond installing extremely easily, you can also uninstall very easily. So you've seen that multiple things have been created, a service, pods, config maps. Deleting each one manually, if you want to get rid of that Nginx, is a little more complicated. So Helm provides you a, a way to delete the whole package at once. So you'll guess it's called the uninstall command. I also specify which namespace. So I want to uninstall from that namespace. And I just simply give the name of my uh, release, which is called Nginx demo. So I send that command and then Helm simply wipes out everything. So if I go back and I look for my config map, it's gone, the service, excuse me, it's gone, and the pod, it's gone as well. Great intro, Mark. So once we have the Helm package manager installed, we want to manage packages with it which means we need to find some of these packages, which are known as charts. Uh, and Helm has taken a decentralized approach for its charts. Unlike Docker Hub, for example, which is a centralized registry of Docker images, though not the only one, uh, Helm instead has catalogs of different repositories, like artifacthub.io or hub.helm.sh. And using a catalog, you can find the registries that have the charts you want to install. It may sound complex, but we'll take a look at how this works. So for our second demo, we're going to dive into charts and we're going to show you how you can configure a Helm chart to set up and install the software you care about the way you want it installed on your Kubernetes cluster. Before you get started, let me just show you a little bit about Helm completion, shell completion, which allows us to work with the Helm command line tool much faster. So. Helm provides the completion command, which allows you to source a script that's going to tell the shell all the available commands, flags, arguments, and you can use it to complete your commands much faster. So for example, once I set this up, I can do Helm install, press tab, and it's going to complete it for me. So you're going to see I use it extensively throughout the demo. So now let's get started on charts. If you want to install a chart, you first need to know which repository it belongs to. So if I use the Helm repo list command, you're going to see that Helm 3 does not ship 
with a default repository. It's up to you to define which repositories you want to use. As we mentioned before, there are catalogs available, like Helm Hub or Artifact Hub, where you can go and look for charts. Once you've found which repository they belong to, you can tell Helm about it. That's by using the Helm repo add command. And in this case, I want to install Nginx. And I know it's on the Bitnami reg repository, so I'm going to add it to Helm. In this case, when I list the repos, now I have a, re a repository stored. If I want to install a different software, for example, Nexus, I would then look on the catalog. I would find out that it's stored in the Sonatype uh, repository. And I can add this one as well. So if I now list my repositories, I have two. So Helm can now access both and I can decide which to use to install what software I care about. I can also use the Helm search command. By using this, I can, by specifying that I want to search my repositories, I can say that I'm interested in the Nexus software. And it's going to search all the repositories I have configured and tell me what are the names of the chart. So then I can know which chart I want to install. So now, if we want to install Nginx, I would do Helm search repo Nginx, and it would show me that I can find it under Bitnami Nginx. Let's see if we have it installed already. Helm list everywhere, all namespaces. I have nothing installed, so let's install Nginx like we had done in the first demo. So that's Helm install tab. I specify the namespace. I can use completion again. I want to name it Nginx demo as we had last time. And I want Bitnami Nginx. So as you signed the previous demo, it's going to install Nginx for us. And the Helm list will show us that it is now available. So what did I just do when I did an install Bitnami Nginx? What is this Bitnami Nginx chart? What we're going to do is use the pull command to actually download the charts locally so that we can look at what it, it contains. So helm pull, and I'm going to tell it to immediately untar the download. And I use the same name, Nginx, from Bitnami do this and now it has downloaded for me a repository called Nginx and if I look inside that's the actual content of a chart so a chart is made up let's not go over everything but the chart is made up of a chart file which describe the chart and a template directory which contains all the different YAMLs that Helm will tell Kubernetes to instantiate so in this case there'll be a deployment there might be a horizontal pod autoscaler, an ingress, a service, etc. There's also a values.yaml file, which gives all the different configurable values that I can change for my own release of Nginx, my own deployment of Nginx. So if I look at that file, I'm sorry, I have to go inside the Nginx repository or directory. If I look inside, I have all kinds of different tags that I can change. For example, by default, it specified that the Nginx version I'm installing is this one, 119 Debian 10 R0. And by default, it has all kinds of different things like there's no pod annotation specified, but you could specify some. The liveness probe, the readiness probe, and many, many more things. So now that I have this, I also want to show you that you can look at this values file without having to actually download the, the chart itself. You can use the helm show command, helm show. And helm show allows you to show all the details about a chart only the is charts file, it's readme file, or it's values file. So in this case, let's show the values file. 
And again, I specify Bitnami Nginx, type it to less. And this same file that I just showed you, Helm shows it to me by downloading it off the internet just for my browsing pleasure. All right, so we saw in the file here that the, by default, the tag that I've installed for Nginx is uh, this version. So let, let's confirm that that's actually installed on my Kubernetes cluster. If I run this command and I describe my deployment and I look at the image version, it actually tells me that, yeah, that is correct. I've installed the Nginx version 1.19.1 Debian 10 R0. Let's say that I want to upgrade to a newer version. I would use the helm upgrade command. So that would be helm upgrade. I can do the help and I get all the different flags that I can use to configure it, to configure this command properly. So let's go back and say helm, helm upgrade. I want to upgrade in the namespace that I've been using, Nginx namespace. I want to upgrade the release that I've been using, Nginx demo. I want to use that bitnami chart, Nginx. And if I leave it like this, it's going to reinstall the same version of Nginx. So what I want to do is tell it, no, I'd like to use a different value for the tag. So we're going to use the flag set to tell the chart that I want to tweak it so that I set the image tag YAML value to a different one. So here I found a more recent version, which is the R14 version. So I tell Nginx to, I tell, uh, sorry, Helm to upgrade and it installs Nginx again with the new values. So in this case, it replaces the old one. And if I do a Helm list minus all, all namespaces, I see that I'm on revision two. So I've upgraded my Nginx version. And if I look at kubectl and I again check the version, I should now see the new R14 version. Let's see if that worked. And yes, Kubernetes is now aware that it should be downloading the R14 version. The Helm upgrade allows you to override certain values like I've showed you directly on the command line with the set flag. But when you have many commands that you want to override, it's better to use a file. So helm upgrade help again has here the minus F or minus values flag, which allows me to specify a file where all my different overrides are set up. So if I show you, I have here a demo values file which contains a new version so let's say I wanted to the R14 version had a problem I wanted to downgrade to R13 I can specify a particular pull policy I can set resources which are potentially not set already so for example let's look at the resources if I want to set this up Let's look at what's currently set up. So if I look in my deployment and I grep for limits, because I want to set limits. If I grep for limits, currently they're not set. So in my upgrade and, and my override, I want to set these extra limits to, to, to control the Nginx deployment the way I want. So I would use the Helm upgrade command. But in this case, I would specify the minus F flag. And I would say use the demo values that YAML file that I just showed you. So it's kind of like using the minus set flag multiple times. So it will override the image tag, the pull policy, and set the resource limits. So let's do this. And then I should point to the right file, which is the right directory above. And now, again, Helm upgrades the Nginx version, follows my instructions. And now if I do helm list, I can see I'm at revision 3. And at revision 3, it should now have limits. Let's check. Do the same. 
if I do a describe on my deployment, we actually look at the details, you see that now I do have limits and they have been set to what I had originally requested in my override file. If I want to look at the content of what's been installed by Helm, I can use the Helm get command. Helm get allows me to access my Kubernetes cluster and download the values file that I've used or the actual YAML files that Helm has sent to Kubernetes. So in this case, I would do Helm get from the namespace I want. The actual um, command is I want to get the values file. I want to do it for my Nginx demo and I'll pipe it to less. And then you can see that Helm tells me when I installed last, I used these user supplied values. If you want to look at the entire manifest, the entire YAML that Helm has sent, you can say Helm get manifest again for the Nginx demo and type it to less and you'll see all the different things that Helm requested Kubernetes to create. So there was a config map, there was a service with different values in them, there was a deployment that was created and that was it for our Nginx to work properly. So now you've learned how to configure charts using either a values file or the set flag. But what if the chart that you want to use doesn't allow you to configure those particular things? Let's say you want to change something that is not configurable. Now you're in a little bit of a pickle. What you want to do in that case is probably improve the chart itself. You probably want to make it more configurable than what it is right now. So you would download it using the pull command. I would get the Bitnami Nginx chart. I would go into that directory. And then I could actually edit the templates and modify them the way I want so that I can do more things than what the configuration of the chart currently allows. And if you really want to be nice, you might want to consider open sourcing, contributing that change to the chart itself so that future deployments, other people can do the same thing and benefit from your improvements. Once you've done that, let's say I've modified my Nginx chart, I can tell Helm to upgrade using, instead of the repository, instead of using here Bitnami Nginx, I would say, no, I want to use my local version, which would be dot. So because I'm in the Nginx repository, I can then upgrade to the recipe that's stored locally on my disk. Helm makes an upgrade. Helm list minus A, and you can see now I have yet another revision that has followed the content of the chart that I had locally on my disk. The last thing I want to show you is what if you have a product that you want to deploy into Kubernetes? How do you have, how do you create a chart that might not exist already? So Helm helps you with this with the Helm create command. It's very simple. Helm create and simply give it a name. So I would do my product and Helm creates a directory here called my product. If I do tree, it creates, as I had shown you early in the demo, a charts file. If it, you want to use dependencies uh, in other charts, templates is all the, by, these are example templates. You would put the templates that you want to use, the YAMLs that you want to use and a values file, and then you can set that up and then you have your own configurable chart for your own product. And then you're ready to go and install your product with Helm into Kubernetes. Awesome demo, Mark. Uh, of course, we can customize and even make our own charts, and there's lots of details in the docs about that. So uh, I have a link here, you can check that out. So. Maybe you yourself are just getting started with Helm, but your organization already uses Helm too, and it works great. Why change? Well, the Helm project is nearly as old as Kubernetes itself. So over the last few years, Kubernetes has evolved a lot. And as a result, Helm's original design, well, 
it predates many advancements in Kubernetes, like custom resource definitions, Kubernetes are back. So Helm 3 addresses all this. Seriously, like your Helm 3 time is now. Uh, we care about stability and reliability and version two is already finished with bug fixes and it'll finish receiving security patches in November, 2020. So I understand everyone competes for your attention and it's hard to know which projects you have to undertake. And if you do have Helm 2 in your organization that you inherited, now is the time to convince everyone that Helm 3 is the future or the present as the case may be. Absolutely. So what's really different about Helm 3? The most important change is that Helm 3 directly uses Kubernetes API server. And that's instead of Helm's old server side component, which was called Tiller. With that, Helm is significantly more tightly integrated with Kubernetes. But really, the real reason behind the, getting rid of Tiller is all about security. Now the entire Kubernetes RBAC system applies directly to Helm. That was something very important for our users. And hey, if you're new to Helm, you may see names like galloping hippo in the docs and think, what? All those fun animal names are no longer a default, but if you miss them, you can still opt in with dash dash generate name. Uh, otherwise, instead of names being auto-generated, uh, you'll get an error unless you request auto-generation. So you have to produce or provide the name when uh, doing a release. All right, another improvement in Helm 3 is that we now have library charts. A library chart, as the name suggests, is a chart that allows sharing functions across multiple charts. So for example, you could set security policies in the library chart, and then they would automatically apply to all your other charts. A library chart does not deploy anything itself, so you have to understand that. What it does is define elements to be used by other charts. So it really, it's about define. You'll see the actual code word define. And, and these charts are really all about code reuse. Yeah, and also if you're new to Helm, when you're reading docs and trying out tutorials, keep an eye out for that mention of Tiller, which we mentioned before. Um, that means that those materials need to be updated for Helm 3, because there's no Tiller in Helm 3. Uh, the short version is, Kubernetes has improved to the point where Tiller isn't needed anymore. So a, a side effect of removing Tiller is that although the releases are simpler now, they're actually not backwards compatible. So Helm v3 stores its metadata in the same namespace as the resources it creates. So the, there's no more Tiller namespace. For those that have seen it, none of that. So, so that's one of the incompatibilities between version two of Helm and version three. So it implies that you can't use Helm three with a Helm two release. You can't upgrade a Helm two release directly using Helm three. What you must do instead is first convert your Helm two release to the Helm three format using the Helm two to three plugin that's provided by the Helm community. Then you can start upgrading using Helm directly. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. So let's take a look at what we can do with that Helm 2-3 to three plugin. All right, let's jump in. Let's look at Helm version. Now with Helm 3, the first difference you note is that there's no more server version, only the client, because there is no more tiller in Helm 3, and there was much rejoicing. So our first step is going to be installing the migration plugin into Helm 3. And we can see it downloads, it installs. We can see that the plugin is installed. And another difference is that we can see that uh, Helm 3 doesn't come with a stable repository by default. This is what we call foreshadowing. We'll see what to do with that in a minute. So let's take a look at the migration plugin. What it does is it can convert releases, and it can migrate configuration. It can also do some cleanup. Let's try a dry run. 
This is dry run mode. It'll just show us what it's going to do. It won't actually do it. So you can see that it will create a bunch of folders and you know data directories. We'll copy over anything that was in our Helm 2 install. So let's take a look at what's in our Helm 2 install right now. We have several repositories that are not the default repository. Uh, we've added a few other ones. Again, Helm 3 has no repositories by default. Let's look at our plugins in our Helm 2 cluster. We have a few plugins just to have some plugins. What plugin do you think we have in Helm 3? Well, we have the one we just installed. We have the migration plugin, but that's it. No other plugins. Okay, cool. So what we can do here is we can do the migration. It warns us that we might lose V3 configuration. So, you know, obviously take precautions, but this has moved the configuration again from our Helm 2 to our Helm 3. Let's take a look. Hey, look at that. Helm 3, we now have all those repositories as an option. And we have the new plugins from Helm 2, but it didn't overwrite the 2 to 3 plugin that we already had in our Helm 3. So that was plugins. But you may be saying, well, that's fine, but I have a bunch of releases that already exist in my Helm 2 cluster, and I would also like to preserve them. I'd like to move them over. Okay, so again, we've moved configuration but let's take a look at what's in the Helm 2 cluster. We have some stuff that was released yesterday. And just to make sure you see, we have nothing up our sleeve. Our Helm 3 has nothing installed in it right now. So say we want to pick one of these. Um, let's take a look at what the convert tool does. And of course it has a dry run option as well. It has options for if Tiller's in a different namespace, it has options if Tiller is not even running in your cluster. So depending on what your Helm 2 looks like, you may need some of those options, but we're going with a really simple path here. We're just going to convert that Postgres release. We're doing it in dry run mode first. And we can see, all right, it's just going to create a copy of that Postgres release, which we only had one version. Again, this is the simplest possible case, but you can extrapolate from this. So let's take a look. converted the Postgres release and note that it says that the V2 still remains. So again, this doesn't do anything to our V2 cluster that we already had running that was, hope, you know, presumably production and important and we definitely didn't want to break in any way. It's all still there. But, and this is what, where it gets interesting, check it out. The Helm 3 stuff that we just brought over, it was running in the old cluster a day ago, and we've brought over that exact release that was updated at that exact date. We didn't do a new deployment of Postgres. We brought over the one from before. Nicely explained, Bridget. That was very good. So, so let's talk about what we just saw. V2 and V3 have different resource artifacts. They have different ways of working with Kubernetes. So what does it really mean? It means that you must take the time to migrate your Helm V2 releases to Helm V3. You cannot simply do a normal in-place upgrade using Helm. That's the whole point of the two to three plugin Bridget has just shown you. So if that seems like a lot, the TLDR is, if you wanna make sure you're using Helm 3 today, but we're here to help. Uh, the community has written a detailed fact that's on the doc site. And we even did some CNCF webinars all about Helm 3 so, and the conversion process. Absolutely. And I think people should know that Helm has a very active and welcoming community. If you want to get involved, there are many ways to do so. You can improve documentation by doing documentation pull requests. You can also take a look at existing issues and see if any interests you. You could work on them. Um, some of them are even marked as good first issue or help wanted. The bottom line is that we look forward to meeting you and don't be shy. Yeah, and the, the project Twitter handle will tweet out releases and other news and Kubernetes Slack. You can also connect with the project on channel Helm-users and channel Helm-dev and channel charts. And we also have mailing lists and a community call every Thursday. You could hang out with us every week. 
and thank you for spending your time with us today. See you in the community. And happy elming, everybody. Bye-bye.